One, two. Welcome to Messenger Films. We'll be right back. I see angels jamming on my rooftop. Take this house of mine into heaven. over me I take this heart of mine to heaven it's another guys it is great to be here with you today and welcome welcome to messenger films hey if you're gonna wear a mask right do it right how do i look yeah this is comfortable this is a a fabric one i found this um actually trump gave this to me personally he signed it he signed the back of it you want to see hold on Oh, no, this was, sorry. Anyhow, <laughs> good to be here with you guys. Welcome to Messenger Films. Glad you could be joining us today on this just lovely uh, June, June 9th already. Wow, the summer is just flying by. And, uh, man, the Lord has just really put it on my heart to, uh, to speak his word. Now, more than ever, uh, we need to be in God's word. Uh, I was at a prayer meeting last night. A few of the brothers joined me. And let me tell you, it was very refreshing. Very refreshing. I recently started attending a new church, which has opened its doors. Okay, it's opened up its doors. It's one of the few churches that is doing that. And so they have, every night, they have uh, uh, an evening prayer. As a matter of fact, one of their evening prayers is going on right now as we speak. Uh, this evening, so... You know what? I go, hey, I'm not going to be a Sunday pure warmer. You know, there is no room for that in this day and age. And in the time that we're living in, the days are evil. And so what we need to do as Christians, look, if you can find a place to go. Right. That's what home the, when the church started out, a chart it started out in the home. With like minded believers coming together, we need to reclaim that. We can't rely on these hirelings to open up their doors because these are not really the shepherds, the kind of shepherd that we need. Thankfully, Jesus is our shepherd. We are the sheep, and sheep are contained in flocks. They come together. They're always together. Okay, so you get what I'm meaning, okay? If, you, if your church is not opening up its doors, call your believers up. Call your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ Come together, because we need to have a call to prayer. And that's what I'm stirred up about tonight, because it should be us out there in the streets protesting the evil that is going on. And so we got a lot to talk about this evening, and we're going to look at the book of Revelation, and we're going to look at a lot of scriptures tonight. So it's so good to be here. 
right? Got my bumper sticker up here again, right? Representing Trump, keep America great. We need to pray for our president. Lord, nothing can overthrow the hand of God. The Bible says that any door that God opens, it can't be shut. Any door that God shuts, it cannot be closed. And we all know that we want the door to be open for the president to, to be reelected. And when God reelects him and that door is shut and he has another four years, guess what? No one's going to be able to undo it because they couldn't undo it this time with all their false impeachments. Now, what we have going on here with all the conspiracies that are in uh, the White House and that are just in, in our government, right? Our government is collapsing. The devil is seeking to unravel everything that this country stands for, which is, by the way, righteousness, a light into the world. Now, I understand that America is not the church. I get that. But America, this country, these 50 states contain the church. This is the most Christian nation in all of the world. And that's why we have the liberties that we do. Because of Christ. Right? So, the church needs to come out of hiding. Come out of hiding. Come out of lockdown. Okay? This isn't Nazi Germany. We're not underground yet. We, have, we still have a voice. We still have the Constitution. We need to make the use of it. We need to, we need to make use of it while we can. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city on a, set on a hill cannot be hid. Now, if we're deliberately snuffing out the light of Christ, and if we're hiding in our homes, and just watching on TV, and just, you know, praying like this, praying that something's going to happen, let me tell you, nothing's going to happen. Jesus said, go forth and preach the gospel. Get out of the house, and go shine your light. So start, start doing up some Bible studies. Go to those prayer meetings. I went to a prayer meeting last night. It was blessed. And let me tell you what I saw. I saw a need for believers to be around believers. That's all it's about. It's about fellowship. We need, we are built up by one another. As iron sharpens iron, the Bible says. No man is an island to himself. Okay. You're just doing it the hard way. You're working harder, not smarter. If you think you can just clam up, shut your doors, and, uh, and, and pray and, and hope that that's going to be enough. Now, now, Paul was in prison. The Apostle Paul was in prison. He was forced into those situations. Okay, I'm not condemning anyone if they're... If they're um, I'm not going to condone anything, any actions, any behavior that is, that is because of fear. Unless you are forced into a situation where you have to be alone. I understand that. Cry out to God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But I think that's the greater message today. One of them. God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. So I'm in this prayer meeting. First time I did a prayer meeting in this church. And there were seven people there, including myself. That place should have been packed tonight with prayer an open door and you don't take it so you got all these communities around here it's no wonder the church is powerless that's what i'm titling this video tonight where's the church we got evil rampant in the streets that's what happens that's what happens i got a proverb i want to read real quick just being led of the spirit here as you know, nothing formal. Let's go to my desktop and look at what we have here, okay? When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoiceth. And when the wicked perish, there is shouting. By the blessing of the upright, the city shall be exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Have you looked at L.A.? Have you looked at Minneapolis? Have you looked at New York? These cities are overthrown by the wicked. And when it talks about the mouth of the wicked, guess who are the mouthpieces? Let me go back to my camera here. 
Guess who are the mouthpieces for these cities? The mayors, the governors, Cuomo, Garcetti, the Chicago mayor, the weirdo who looks like the, that thing from the Beetlejuice. I should pull up a picture of that. But look, guys, wicked is overthrowing our cities. It's not the church. The coronavirus is 95% lies. Okay? And as for George Floyd and BLM, it's not about racism. It's not about George Floyd. It's about a coup. It's about a coup, a coup masquerading. Masquerading. The devil masquerades himself as an angel of light. Do you think the devil cares about racism and noble causes and all that stuff? No, he doesn't. He's, But he's not going to waste a good crisis, that's for sure. So he's rallying behind. He is the driving force behind the looting, rioting, protests. He's responsible for that. And guess what? All these idiots who are marching in the street, yes, you, you're being used by the devil. You're being used. You're just a pawn in a game. Okay? You think you're doing the right thing? You're not. Now, let me see if I can pull up uh, some... uh, I recently shared some images online of myself because I wanted to take a stand. Okay? I wanted to take a stand. Let me see if I can uh, pull those up. Okay, just bear with me. Here we go. All right, so there's one. That's a mugshot. Every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus. Amen? Okay, here's an, here's, uh, let me see. Here's another one. Okay, God is essential. Yep, that's me. Okay, and most importantly, watch this. No God, no peace. No God, no peace. Okay? Now this, this is, uh, I'm a photographer, I love all this stuff, and so I created this. And I lost followers because I posted this, and I'm grateful for that. There must be separation. We are divided. Pick a side. Choose whom this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen? So, leave a comment. Like, subscribe. Messenger Films here, speaking the truth. God is essential. God is essential. That's why we need to get these churches open. It's not about no justice, no peace. That only leads to revelry and chaos. No, no, no. If you want peace, you need God. Okay? And you know what? Let's pull up this other picture again here too because I got something to say about this. So let me remove this one and then here we go. Every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus. Now, there's a lot going on in the media right now about bending the knee. You're seeing it everywhere. These, it's all, man, it's really bad. Pelosi, the left, all these leaders are taking a knee. They're taking a knee. And what is happening with this thing? See, again, it's a masquerade. They're masquerading as, okay, well, we're doing this to symbolize that we stand for equality in Black Lives Matter because George Floyd had a knee bent on him and that was unjust. Well, if, if, if bending a knee on, some, on someone's neck is so bad, why is everyone doing it? That makes no sense. Same reason why people are doing this. Nelson Mandela, black power, anti-God. This is anti-God. That's what this is. No, do this instead. Open your hand up to God. Humble yourself. Okay? You will not succeed. It's futile. Futile. So let's watch a little scene that I prepared for you guys about bending the knee. Now, a lot of, a lot of times in movies, especially now in this day and age, Christians and righteous men, everything's flipped. Okay? 
So keep that in mind when you watch this next clip. Everything's clipped. And let me just say that these two guys that you see in this clip, I stand with them. I stand with them. I don't kneel, and neither did they. Let's watch this clip right now. Here we go. You will have to kill me, too. Step back and shut your mouth. Who are you? A stupid boy. I'm Dick Tarly, son of Randall Tarly. You are the future of your house. This war has already wiped one great house from the world. Don't let it happen again. Bend the knee. Bend the knee. I will not. Your Grace, nothing scrubs bold notions from a man's head like a few weeks in a dark cell. I meant what I said. I'm not here to put men in chains. If that becomes an option, many will take it. I gave them a choice. They made it. Your Grace, you stop beheading entire I'm families. I'm not beheading anyone. Randall Tarly, Dick and Tarly. I, Daenerys of House Targaryen, first of my name, breaker of chains and mother of dragons, sentence you to die. Dracarys. That's the left. See all those guys bending? That's the left. Okay, okay. Do you see that? I will never bend the knee. I would rather burn. I would rather die standing for Jesus. So what's the kneeling all about? What's this all about here? Now, conditioning, preparation, gearing up the masses, gearing up the public, getting people used to ideas takes time. It takes time. Now, if we go back to the book of Daniel and we look at um, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, you guys all know the story. That there was an image set up. And there was a conspiracy going on against them. Because these guys knew, hey, they were Christians. The only way to kill these Christians is if we come up with some sort of decree. At the sound of the music, of the timbrel and this, this and that. O king, make a law that you would have to kneel when they hear this. Now, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, Jews, people of God, they couldn't do that. Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and, and, and him only shall you worship. Oh, what are you saying? That just because you want to kneel to George Floyd, that that's worshiping uh, uh, someone? Hmm. What do you think it is? Do you think that, that this mass kneeling is simply a gesture? Let me tell you what it is. It's submission. It's submission. It's conformity. It's pressure being put on people to conform. All these mass protesters out there, go up to one of them, ask them, 
who is responsible for, you know, dealing with this whole kneeling thing? It's the people at the top of the pyramid, and they're just at the bottom, and they just do what they're told. So whatever the movement says to do, they're going to do it. doesn't matter what it is. Now the movement is to defund the police. The movement is to kneel. So whatever the masses do, you're going to do it. And here's my point. It's leading up to kneeling before Lucifer, his Antichrist, his image of the beast, kneel or die. That's what it's going to come down to. Maybe I should pull up my art series once more for you guys to take a look at. I would need to uh I would need to prepare that. Um but you know what? Let me go ahead and, and do that real quickly. Because I want to show you some of the artwork that I did that has to do a show. My graduation art show I recently did. And it was all about the mark of the beast. And let me tell you, it was a joy and a privilege uh, to make that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up here. And uh, we will, uh, I'll, get, I'll get to show you guys that. Um, okay, I got it. I got it already. Desktop. Okay, so what you're looking at is one of my pieces. Okay, I did a Time Magazine series. Now, I don't mean to sound, you know, redundant here because I, I talked about some of this artwork in a previous video, but again, it's relevant, okay? The Golden Age of Compliant Commerce 666, okay? Cash, we're going to be in a cashless society soon, and 666 is going to take over the world, okay? Next, that was my artist statement, Freedom's Fall, okay? This was before just before the, the, the coronavirus really shut everything down, okay? I made this because we knew that this was coming. Now, these headlines I created, but they are inspired by prophecy. Freedoms fall from grace. USA now under a holy alliance with the revived Roman Empire. America swallowed up by a global, global appetite for acquisition. Believe me when I say that's coming. And guess what? The idiots of this country are going to hand it to them on a silver platter. They want to be, they want to assimilate into the new world order. Okay? The cash of society. The U.S. dollar now obsolete under the new BioCoin 666. Money one day going to be thrown on the streets, completely worthless and ignored. It's coming. Noah's Ark, we all know that's there. This is a real picture. You are looking at Noah's Ark. Isn't that amazing? I'm telling you, the wheels of the chariots that follow the children of Israel are still at the bottom of the Red Sea. Outcast, we're seeing this happen more and more. Why Christians everywhere are refusing to take the mark 666, resulting in global ostracism. This is going to be a real headline soon. And I would gladly be on the other end of the. I would gladly take her place. You'll see me in here too. Okay, resist. The church needs to resist righteous revolt. See, the mark of the beast is just a matter of time before it gets here, okay? Now, the church is going to be raptured. The existing church is going to be raptured. Those who acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord, those who are not in, uh, in continuous sin, in rebellious, unrepentant sin, okay? And those walking in faith, looking to the coming of the Lord. Those are the ones who are going to be raptured. But those who are left behind will experience revival. They're going to see they finally need to get right with God. They're going to see the Antichrist come to power. And this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a resistance against join us and take the mark. That's what's going to come. And they will lose their heads for it. Now, contrary to those people like Nancy Pelosi and all these idiots, look, they're already kneeling. If they're, if they're kneeling now under the, under the force of the spirit of Antichrist of some movement... What do you think they're going to do when Antichrist is power? 
they're going to take the mark. That's what they're going to do. That's how far that goes. Total assimilation, becoming one with the beast. So this is a, a, a um, an illustrative depiction of someone who's actually filled with the spirit of Antichrist. They are condemned. They've taken the mark, and they are now possessed with that spirit. Another picture of taking the mark of the beast, right? This is, Here's your vaccine. As a matter of fact, I'm working on doing a new piece about the vaccine, a new, a new art piece, okay? Soul ownership. The Bible banned in 2045. That was the name of my show, 2045, the year of ultimate censorship for Christians. Trust me, this is coming. But it's not here yet. That's why the Bible says, redeem the time for the days are evil. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. I'm so disgusted by the church. They're supporting the protests. They're kneeling. Man, it is really bad out there. The great falling away, the Bible prophesied it. The great falling away must happen. And we're going to see a falling away very soon. It's already happening. Modern martyrs. Biometric. Trust me, they're going to be looking for us. Ah, yes, the headhunters, the final solution, as coined by the Nazis, the latest in global execution for the non-compliant. So these people are going to be chopping your head off if you don't comply, if you don't take the mark 66, 666. But do yourself a favor, do your soul a favor, let them do it. Let this blade hit your neck so you can wake up in heaven. Amen? Do it. Black eyes symbolizes possession blindness and loss of soul 2045 is this year we finally purge the unmarked we're seeing murder in staggering rates all of a sudden out of nowhere they're just killing people lawlessness the spirit of lawlessness has reached a new potency and this will be the way the way of the sword will be the way of the future uh, here's another one going back to currency it's going to be a one-world currency run by the Antichrist. Okay, worship or die. Now look, it's not going to be this blatant. There will be 666. You will see that. It's going to be up to you to use your brain and say the Bible was right. If you're left behind, God forbid. If you're not, get right with God right now. Whoever confesses the name of the Lord will be saved. Repent of your sins. Get right with God right now. Here's one of our bio mugshots, as I call it, the future of mugshots, where the non-compliant, such as myself, will be detained. But this is usually for those who have been left behind and have turned to Christ. Unless it happens before the rapture, we'll see. Either way, we're not complying. Here's our girl again, another non-compliant Christian. Another non-compliant. There's me. Another non-compliant. Praise God. He who would seek to save his life will lose it, but he that would lose his life, the Bible says, for my sake, he shall find it. Okay? Love not the world nor the things that are in the world. God is not in those things. Don't do it. The people who are out there protesting in mass droves, that's what a love of the world looks like. They are dying to preserve their future because they think they have one and they think this is all there is. All those people protesting and kneeling, they're going to take the mark of the beast. They're going to worship the devil and they will be thrown into burning hellfire for an eternity for resisting the grace of God. Here's your executor, one of them. Join the beast. Here's another one. It's going to be people like this. They want to get rid of cops so they can bring in people like this. That's what's going on with that. Okay, so that was um, that was uh, that was my show there. Now let's go back to uh, bring it back to me. Good to be here. Welcome to Messenger Films. Um, yeah, so just a lot to get to tonight, you know, and I'm just really concerned about, um, 
about the church. We really need to, to come together. We need to pray. And more than that, we need to truly believe by faith that God is hearing our prayers, and uh, we need a great revival. See, I want to leave, I want to be raptured, I want to leave this place victorious, having done all I could to save a soul. That's what I want to do for the kingdom. There's some preachers out there who are still preaching, believe it or not, your best life now. Let me tell you, America is going down. The sink, the ship, excuse me, the ship is sinking. We're not going to go down with the ship and, and drown. We're going to be rescued. But those who love the world and love this life and love the ship, if you will, will not They're going to go down with the ship because they love it so much. They would, they, they're they going to go down with it. I don't know. Maybe they don't realize it's sinking, but it's sinking. Now, Jesus, who walked on water, if you will, said, Peter, come on out. Don't be afraid. Focus on me. Okay? That's how we're going to get rescued, by focusing on Jesus, walking the water. We won't drown we won't sink unless you run out of faith. Don't do that. But even then, put your hand out and God will catch you. Now, if you're like this, God, save me. He's going to be like, no, open your hand first and then I'll grab your hand and I'll save you. All you BLM people out there, they shouldn't even call it Black Lives Matter. All lives matter and more than your life is your soul. All souls matter. Now, the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, they spoiled the Egyptians. They took, they took the best of what they had, and they went out in power, rejoicing in victory. That's how we're going to leave. We're going to leave with as many precious souls as we can going straight up to heaven. That's the real promised land. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you would be there also. I go to prepare a place. So you mean that this place that you created for us, God, it wasn't there before. He went to go make it for us. So he left us the Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit, so we could go prepare heaven to bring up his bride. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. Amen. So Jesus promised that if it were not so, I would have told you. You believe in God, believe also in me. As a matter of fact, John, that's John 14. I think he talks about rebuking fear there. Let me go there uh, real quick. John 14. Okay. Here we go. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Now look. We're going through a really rough time right now, and I realize that hearts are troubled. My heart has been troubled. That's why I have to go back to this verse where he says, let not your heart be troubled. Don't let it. The heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? You have to keep at bay through faith what the heart wants to give itself over to, and in this case, that is fear. God is showing me don't trust in your heart because sometimes my heart tells me, Something bad is going to happen to me. But Jesus said, pray, Lord, deliver me from evil. So we need to pray. We need to, ask, we need to ask God to deliver us from evil and believe that he will protect the flock because he's the shepherd. Okay? He is the way, the truth, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God but through Jesus. Okay? So, let's uh, pull up a couple scriptures here real quick. Let me go back to my desktop, and uh, let me see, we'll bring up uh, the Bible app. 
And uh, what I have here is, let's go to 1 Corinthians. So this is what's going on in the world, man. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Now the wisdom that is completely destroyed because it, it, it's, it's nothing, it's not doing anything, is everything we're hearing right now from from our, from our so-called leaders, mayors, all over the ones that don't know God and they don't stand for our country and, and righteousness. Because their wisdom right now is to defund the police, to keep us locked in, to trace us, to control us. Okay? Um, there was another scripture here. Hold on a second. Okay. Well, we'll come, uh, we'll come back to that one. Let me see here. Proverbs... Proverbs 1.1. 1, 1. Here we go. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. We need this ornament of grace, man, is the word of God. And we need to wear the word in our hearts and in our minds daily like never before. Okay? Now, going back to going back to the church, we're still in the church age, okay? So I think the, 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 the you know what I really want to get to is is um, is the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation. We're in this church age, so shouldn't it make sense that we go and and hear what God is saying to the churches? That's where we should be. Amen. So let's just dive right into it. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear which them which are evil. And thou hast tried, excuse me, thou hast tried them which say, which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate, the deeds he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Okay, so what we see here, we see repentance, don't we? Thou art fallen. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Retrace your steps. Examine yourself. Search your spirit. That's what it says. Remember, therefore, whence thou art fallen. Recall, recall your sin. David said, I'm sorry for my sin, okay? And repent, get rid of it, get it out of your life. You have no excuse for bondage. I have found that out. The power is there. You need to believe in the power of God to free you from sin. Believe that, confess it, and repent of it. And every time the devil tries to whisper in your ear, go smoke another cigarette, go, another, go drink another can of beer, go pull up that, those dirty pictures, you say, no, I repented of that. I'm not going back. Do the first works. Well, what are the first works? God said he's prepared good works in advance for us to do. Because he's sanctified, and he's sanctified us and he's given, he's given all of us a ministry. So if you're backslidden, whatever you were doing before, reading your Bible, praying going to Bible study, going to church, go back and do those things. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. Praise God for repentance. Amen. 
unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Okay, that's where this saying comes from. Love Love not your lives. Love not the world. If any man would, would love this world, the love of the Father is not in him. He that would seek to save his life will lose it. It's talking about losing your soul, the second death. Okay. But he that would lose his life, which is this, death, losing your life, losing your temporal body life, you will find your life because he says, I will give thee a crown of life. I'm telling you, we're talking about Jesus here. He alone has the authority to eternal life, the keys to life and death. All right, the Bible says, fear not him who can kill the body and afterward they can do nothing. But fear him who has the power to put both body and soul into hell. There is no fear of God anymore, even in the churches. What's it going to take? What's it going to take for you to for you to wake up and say, "Oh no, I'm not right with God." And by his grace, if you are if you do come to that revelation, just repent. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Don't be double-minded. Go back and do your first works, or else God is going to come and 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 snuff you out. And you will be in darkness. Be thou faithful unto death. There's a lot of false prophets in the Old Testament that the Bible rebukes for telling everybody, you shall not die, this shall not be unto you. Don't worry, good days are ahead, everything's all good. The Bible says many would be offended because they won't be able to handle this. They won't be willing to die. Why? Because they don't have the foundation of the witness of Christ within them. They're fearful and cowards, the Bible says telling you you don't want to live in the world that's coming it's going to get really bad it is simply not worth it be on god's side be on god's side he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death that's a promise so what do you mean lord he that is overcome by the mark of the beast will be hurt with the second death yes Yes, we see that in Revelation chapter 13. We'll get to that in a minute. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword in two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou, hast, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast them there that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. So you got this church, right, in Pergamos that is housing, if you will, that is, you know, all these sanctuary cities. Now there's, there's, there's talk of, you know, cop-free zones, sanctuary cities that are really just sanctuaries for sin that's what this is bible says do not give place to the devil that's what these people did they had a place for the doctrine of balaam they had a place for the doctrine of the nicolaitans and god hates that you can't partake at the table of demons at the table of the lord you cannot repent repent you better be thankful we better be thankful that god is even telling us to repent so we can obey him he's giving us a chance the bible says he makes a way of an escape 
You won't be tempted beyond that which you can bear. You can repent. There's good news. The choice is yours. I'm telling you, you won't be able to blame anybody if you stay in your sin and you go to hell. You won't be able to repent. You won't be able to repent then, that's for sure. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first, notwithstanding... I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest the woman Jezebel who called herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. Wow. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. Now that is so important. I gave her a space to repent. Wow. You know what space means? Time. Time is running out, folks. Now we're, we have space right now to repent. Do it. Behold, I were cast into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins of the heart, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Now there's there's a there's a there's an evil doctrine going around the church right now that says feel free to fail, don't worry about it. God understands where you are. Don't feel condemned about your sin. It's nothing but condemnation. No, that's not what the word of God teaches. The word God teaches to stop doing those things. There is no grace for sin. We can go into Romans chapter 6 and we can read about that. Christ is not the minister of sin. He didn't die so you could go and screw people out of marriage, go have sex out of marriage, to get drunk, to smoke weed. The works of the flesh in Galatians. You know what they are. You have space to repent, so you better do it. God commands a spotless bride. Virgins who have their oils filled with lamb. What does that mean? Why did he give us the example of virgins? Well, for one, they were not, they were pure. They were pure. It's a perfect, perfect picture of purity. There's a woman who has kept herself from fornication. Not only were they pure, not only, not only were they blameless, but they valued the Spirit of God in so much that they waited for the bridegroom, they made sure they had plenty of oil, and it paid off. It paid off big, man. Paid off big. Now, we, the church, are called to have our lamps full. And we're also called to be pure in every single way. Your body's the temple of the Lord. Okay? I'm not going to go over every single church here. Let's just read up to chapter 3. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, thank God, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say, say unto the churches. Now what I want to say about America and how it's going down Nothing lasts forever, okay? Not the greatest kingdom. It's sad that the, the ship of America is sinking, but God is doing a new work because, because of his word. 
because of the sure words of prophecy. And we can't have this kingdom here unless everything is under God's feet. We got to get past this new world order. We got to get past the Antichrist. We got to get past the beginning of sorrows before we can have this. And we're in the midst of this right now, so we need to be patient. Okay? Now, the only reason why we're continuing is so God is patient, so people can get saved. It's not so we can live in this country and go to the movies for another hundred years. I tell you that. That's not why God is waiting. Okay? I want to see Trump reelected as much as the next conservative. But I can't wait on that. I can't put my hope in that. And I don't, even though I support our president. And the only reason I support Donald Trump is because the entire world hates him, except for people like us. One guy said this. Let me go back to my screen here. One guy said, I can't remember where I heard it, but it was really inspiring. He said, when you see a small group of people, I'm paraphrasing here, when you see a small group of people that is despised versus a large group group of people that are accepted, a larger group, and one is going this way and one is going that way, he said, go with the small group. Go with the ones that are despised because that's who God is going to be among Okay. It's not a coincidence that Christians, most of them anyway, support our president. Why? Because we really want to obey scripture and we realize that every authority is is in place because of God, because these things are just a shadow. Okay, this isn't the real world. Jesus said um Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will is not done on earth yet. Okay? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead, our, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We need to pray all those things. Provision, deliverance from the enemy, praying for God's will. And we're patient as we do that. Praise God. So you can see that we you know what God is. Go back and read the rest of that in Revelation where God is talking to the churches. And you will get an idea. Now where we're at basically now is the church of Laodicea, those who think they don't need God, those prosperity churches, those emergent churches who are more, who are more focused on their stupid little uh, programs and their books and their bookstores and their, and their fundraisers, okay? That's all, that's why Jesus threw the tables into the temple because they, they, he said, my, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer and you've made it a den of thieves, Okay? Can you imagine if you walked into a church and you saw some guy with two big bags of oranges on either side and he's just selling oranges as people come in the church? No, you don't see that because it doesn't belong in the church. It belongs on the street. The rest of all the other crap that people bring into the churches. And that's why all these churches closed. They close like the rest of the liquor stores out there. Actually, those are still open. They close like the rest of the businesses out there. Why? Because they treated their house of God like a business. That's why. Well, guess what? You're out of business, aren't you? That's not what God's house is for. It's all about people and souls. And they're now judged. They're now judged. Um, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, let's go there, um, because I got something out of this passage 
when I was thinking that, you know what, as, as we just read in Revelation, don't love your life unto death, right? Be an overcomer. God will give us a crown of life. By faith, man, we are just willing to do anything and everything that God tells us to do. Okay, so let's read. You know what? I'm going to read um, chapter 11. Because now more than ever, I'm going to read the entire chapter. Now more than ever. Okay, you know what? Let me make it easy for everyone. Let's just go back to the, um, let's just go back over here. And we'll we'll look at it all together. So if you don't have a Bible, that's okay. You can you can come down here with me. Um, I love this app. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, by it, okay, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So there was no evolution. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, right? He commended him, and by it being dead yet speaketh, okay? By faith, Enoch was translated, a.k.a. raptured, that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of those things not seen as yet, moved with fear, Right, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, amen, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Okay, we're over here. Let me go up. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Okay? Loving not the world. Okay? Loving not the world by faith, he looked past this life. And we know God made the earth. The earth abideth forever, the Bible says. Okay? But... It's not going to last under the satanic system that we're in. Through faith, also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Now listen, church. Now more than ever, we need to, we need to confess that we are strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Having faith that the promises of God, the Bible says the promises of God are, are inherited through faith and patience. We're just passing through. We're just passing through. Don't get too comfortable. Don't waste your time here either. Here we are. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed, them, ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. How about that? Isn't that what Jesus said? I go to prepare a place for you? Jesus is God. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. Wow. Wow. What a city that's going to be. Let me tell you, there isn't going to be any protesting there. And the only kneeling going on in that heavenly Jerusalem is going to be to God, the Lamb of God at the throne. 
The Bible says no dogs will be allowed into heaven. And that's talking about people like the looters and the protesters and the ungodly. There is no place for them in heaven. Why? Because they're already kneeling to a false god and a false system. Those idiots. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Let me tell you, I don't see faith in any of our leaders right now. Except the ones that, of course, have faith. Very few, very few of those. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. When he was tried. Tribulation, man. We're being tried right now. Okay? We're being squeezed. Don't lose hope. Offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Sound familiar? That's a picture of Jesus. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, again, another resurrection picture there, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith, Isaac... By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By, you know what? Before I continue, this is important right here. Do not be afraid of the king's commandment. Don't go to church. Do this. Do that. Oops. Sorry, guys. Looks like I lost something here. Okay, the connection was lost. Okay, not a big deal. Hold on a sec, guys. Okay. Testing, testing. I'm still here. Um, it looks like I have a backup camera here. Uh, let me see if I can call up that camera. Okay. Well, here's a backup camera. So I'm glad I'm still here. Um, let's go back to our desktop and go back into the Word. Now, we can't be afraid of the King's Commandment. But guess what it's going to take to not walk in fear? It's going to take faith. It's going to take faith. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Look, he knew what was coming. He knew that it was going to be far greater reward than only the pleasures of sin for a season. And that's what the world is living for right now. They're living for the pleasures of sin, and it's only for a season. Okay? Everything is passing away. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. There we go. There we go. Another example of not fearing the wrath of the king. That's why we need to rightly divide the word of truth in Romans 13. Okay? You don't just kneel to the king just because everyone says you should do it. No. You need to put faith in the word of God first. Okay? For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the past over and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land which the Egyptians assaying to do were drowned. Now that is incredibly significant. Did those Egyptians that tried to follow the children of Israel, did they go through the Red Sea by faith? No, they didn't. They were looking with their eyes and they say, oh look, we can go through there. Because it's open. It's open to us too. No, it wasn't. It was closed to them because they didn't belong to God. 
They trusted God when he dipped, when he parted. How scary would that be? When he parted those things, when those waves and that sea and, and made him pass through, it takes faith to walk through that thing for that thing not to fall on you. Okay? So instead of walking on water this time, like Peter did, they walked under the water on dry land. You can't just do whatever you want to do and expect God to, to sanctify it. You will drown. You will drown. And that's what all these protesters and all these people of the world are doing right now. They are trying to go through the, through the waves on dry land. But guess what? It's not going to work. Because it's not by faith. And those, those waves that they want to pridefully walk through are going to come crashing down on them. Trust me, it's coming. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. How about that? When she had received the, when she had received the spies with peace. Almost done. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the fire, violence of fire. Look, we need to fight right now because this America's on fire, right? America's on fire. By faith, we can quench the violence of that fire. By faith, the church needs to wake up. You know why they're not doing anything right now? Because they don't have any faith. Because they're full of fear. Fear of who? The king. Whoever that is in their state. Okay, moving on. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Waxed valiant in fight. Turn to the flight. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Women receive their dead raised to life again. How about that? Now that takes some serious, authentic faith. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. I just showed you that clip. Those guys refused to kneel. We'll probably end with that. I'm going to play that again. Others were tortured, tortured, not accepting deliverance. That they might obtain a better resurrection. I'm telling you. God is going to say, well done and faithful servant. I'm going to pat you on the back. There's a special crown for you. Why? Because you wouldn't accept their pathetic deliverance that you might live another miserable day in their miserable world. Rather, rather, you chose to be tortured. And let me tell you, that takes faith. Wow. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder were tempted. Can you imagine that? We won't throw you into jail. We won't do any of this stuff. Instead, come and you can live in this big mansion and we're going to give you this car. All you got to do is kneel. I tell you, when you tempt people with riches, boy, that's how, that's how Satan does it. That's how he tempted Jesus in the wilderness. All this will be thine if you would but, if you would but do what? Kneel. Satan wants this country and the world to kneel before him. He's dying to do it because he wants to be like God. That's why they call him Antichrist because he wants to take the place of God. And guess what? People are going to bow. People are going to kneel. But not me, not us. We're slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in the deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that is really important, that they, that they without us should not be made perfect. God has having provided some better thing for us. Now it's easy to hold on to something 
that you have found in this life and thinking, wow, this is cool. I don't want to give it up. Just like children, right? Your parents see you have something. They want you to get rid of it. They want you to trust him and they want to give you something better. Okay? The Bible says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will God give his Holy Spirit to them that obey him? That's why we can't look at the things that are seen in this life. Thinking, oh Lord, if I'm here just another year or two, you know, I'll graduate or I'll, I'll have saved up enough to, to get that car and to finally get that home and to have children. God is saying, let it go. God has something better for us. Much, much better. Your greatest day on earth will never ever compare to your first day in heaven. I should continue real quick because this is important. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Okay? telling you, obedience, obedience to God is the greatest reward. Eye has not seen, hear has not heard what God has prepared for those who love Him. We can't possibly fathom in our, in our, in our earthly bodies what is, what is coming for us. And that's why it takes faith, folks. It takes faith just to believe God at His Word. And there's no excuse. There's so much here. There's just so much here. I could go on forever. Look at that. So many promises. So many stories. No excuses. Revelation. So where was that at? Now if we go to the... Um, well... 13 talks about the mark of the beast. Anyhow, look. I'm going to play that clip again. Run off my queen. You will have to kill me too. Step back and shut your mouth. Who are you? Stupid boy. I'm, I'm Dick Ontarly. Son of Randall Tarly. You are the future of your house. house. This, this war has already wiped one, one great house from the world. Don't let it happen again. Bend the knee. I will not. Your Grace. Nothing scrubs bold notions from a man's head like a few weeks in a dark cell. I meant what I said. I'm not here to put men in chains. If that becomes an option, many will take it. I gave them a choice. They made it. Your Grace, you stop beheading entire I'm families. I'm not beheading anyone. Okay, I think I'm going to Here we go, being Grace. tortured for the faith. Faith to do this. Lord Randall Tarly, Dick and Tarly. I, Daenerys of House Targaryen, first of my name, breaker of chains and mother of dragons, sentence you to die. Praise God, send me to heaven. Dracarys. Yeah, 
they are, instantly bow because they love their lives too much. That's what happened. Love not your life unto death. So guys, I just found out that not only did I have to switch up a back of camera, but when I do that, when this other camera of mine failed, I may have been on the built-in microphone that was on the laptop. So I apologize for that. You know, not a perfect system that I have here, but I should be coming in loud and clear now. Uh, but anyhow, listen, that's all I got for today. I'm glad that God has um, given me a space to spend this word with you. And um, we'll, we'll pray in just a second. But uh, you know what? Share this video if you can. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I mean, anything you can do is, is encouraging. You know, we are the light of the world. And um, I'm believing that God is going to, uh, to do something great in these last days before we, before we head out, before we go home to be with the Lord. Father, by faith, God, I do this video. Lord, by faith, people are watching because they know they need encouragement. By faith, we believe your word and we take one day at a time. By faith, God, we believe that you are going to deliver us from evil, that you're going to provide for our needs because you said it, because you're not a man that you should lie. By faith, God, I believe that you will continue to work in our lives and to show us things to come and to give us discernment. And I believe, Lord, that you love us so much that you sent your only son here to die for us. If you have not made that decision yet to, to follow the Lord, God, I pray that you would convict hearts and minds right now. That in your grace, you have given everybody a space to repent. And if they don't take that opportunity, God, it won't be your fault. It won't be my fault. It'll be their fault, God. Because you're a long-suffering. The most wicked person on earth has space to repent. Thank you for that time, God, that we have. And by faith, most importantly, God, we know that you've heard these prayers and that they've gone up to you, God, and that they are sweet-smelling uh, sacrifice and savor unto you, God. The body of Christ is a savor unto you. But to the world, God, we are the smell of the stinge of death. And they want to get rid of us as quickly as possible. And you've given them space to repent, God. And because they've turned their back on you, and because of de they've despised God the righteous, you will bring swift destruction. When they say peace and safety, shall so sudden destruction come upon them. And we're getting very close to that moment, even at the door. The Lord is at hand. And we will go up victorious. We will ascend because you will take us to be with you because you have something better for us. You prepared a city. You said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. If you're a Jehovah's Witness or, a, or you're a Mormon and you acknowledge that there is one God, but guess what? You don't have the, you don't have the whole truth. You're missing Jesus Christ. He who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son has not life. That whosoever should believe in him, it's talking about the only begotten Son. We pray all these things in your holy name, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for watching today, Messenger Films, as we sign off. Go in peace. Go in the light of the Lord. Go make some noise. Go make a shout. Go let your light shine. And do something for the kingdom today, in Jesus' name, amen. One, two... The angels jamming on my rooftop. Take this house of mine into heaven. Oh, they're having a good time watching over me. Take this heart of mine